Svetlana Tsihanovskaya. Good afternoon and welcome. Thank you, good afternoon. So, opposition leader, president-elect, how would you like to be, how would you present yourself? How do people present me? How Belarusian people present me? And they present me as leader elected by Belarusian people or leader of democratic Belarus. That's a fine title. But a year ago, you were still not politically active. How would you have described yourself a year ago if we had we had met? Mother and wife, and that's it. That's a pretty remarkable change in a year. You were not planning on running against uh, President Lukashenko. It's actually your husband who is currently jailed who was going to going to run for president. What made you become politically active? I was actually involved in this when my husband started to uh, go around country, go around Belarus, just asking Belarusian people how do they live, uh, what would they like to change if they are okay with this uh, uh, with this regime. And I was involved just worrying about him because I knew what he's fighting against and um, after he was jailed and couldn't uh, give his documents to the election commission uh, i did it instead of him not because i wanted to participate or something at that very moment i uh, made this just for love just to support him but when i saw how many people uh, came to put the signatures for me I understood that I can't step away. I have to be with people. If uh, people at last woke up and they uh, want these changes the same as my husband did, as I do, so I didn't give up, uh, you know, despite of threats or, you know, constant feeling of fear. Uh, I couldn't betray persons who believed me who believed in me looking back it was a from lukashenko's viewpoint it was a terrible mistake that he let you run for president why did he let you run uh i think he wanted to make love of me he it's from one point uh, of view uh, on the other side he didn't he lost the connection with Belarusian people and he didn't know the mood of Belarusian people. He couldn't expect that people of Belarus will vote for housewife, for women. He always said that uh, uh, our constitution is not for women, our country is too complicated to be led by uh, women. But he didn't know that people uh, are striving for these changes. He lives in his small world or he lived in his small world where he is strong leader and he was sure that people are still participating him like this and uh, i think he uh, he made some mistakes at that moment he uh, let me uh, in this uh, production campaign and he uh, got jailed uh, Victor Babarika, one of his opponents, and made uh, Valery Tsepkala uh, flee of the country, and he jailed my husband as well. So he and 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 you know he was sure that people will not follow me. You know, he was sure that you know. <laughs> I don't know. Again, he didn't know his people. He forgot about. He forgot about us. So. Many mistakes. Why do you think 2020 was so different? Because uh, he had faced protests before, notably in 2006 and two, 2010. But this time it was very, very different. We all remember the the, the protests from from <laughs> starting from last August. So you see, Belarusian people uh, for a long time were against regime, against the dictator, but. In previous times, he managed to uh, to stop this again with only with the violence. But 
this year is uh, different because uh, so many reasons for this. People are get got sick and tired of him first of all, and he uh, showed such a level of uh, irrespect to Belarusian people that he always told that you are nobody without me. I'm your leader. You will not survive without uh, I, I, only me. Who knows how? Uh, potato crows and you know how tractor is working you know you you will not manage without me but during covid when um government uh didn't help medics uh people started to organize this medical help they bought these masks they uh, uh collected money to buy um, the special equipment for for breathing and people understood Look, we are absolutely wonderful with people, hardworking, and for sure we will manage to live without him. They like took off this this mask, you know, and uh, when people saw how he was getting rid of his opponents, people understood that there are so many of us. Why are we afraid? You know, we together we can do everything. And during these meetings, people saw each other's eyes. They felt such warmth uh, to each other. They felt so united that, uh, you know, they understood that we will manage. And uh, once again, a new generation grew up in Belarus. And while our parents and grandparents, they lived in Soviet Union, and then for 26 years under the pressure of the regime, they like, you know, got used to this state, that they have to rely on, them, on themselves, that, uh, you know, uh, government is not taking care much about us. But new generation uh, had the opportunity to travel, internet appeared, and uh, they saw other countries, how people can live, what is normal life is. And a uh, new generation uh, want uh, normal life for themselves and for their children. So many, many factors really influence the situation in Belarus. If I'm right, it's day 206 since the protests started in, 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 your, in your country. And for three months after the elections, there were weekly Sunday marches and tens of thousands of people on the streets. Why didn't they work? I mean... Lukashenko is still holding on to power. Our protesting movement is absolutely peaceful. We uh, people went out with flowers, with balloons, and they just wanted to show how many of us that we are the majority that uh, voted for other candidate, not for Lukashenko. You are not our president. You are illegitimate. Just for government to say that we are people and we uh, don't recognize you. But Lukashenko, first of all, after the day of election, he made from Belarus a place of hell. And first three days, they were awful. So many people have been detained. Detained. They were treated so brutally in the jails. And when they started to go out of jails after three days, people really couldn't believe that such atrocities has happened in Belarus. It was such a shock for Belarusian people that our at that moment, still President Lukashenko could give this order to beat and to kill people. And after this, people started to go out to demonstrate not only for against falsified elections, but also against violence, against tortures, against rapes that, uh, you know, uh, Belarusians felt uh, after their elections. And the other people who also, who maybe even didn't want to participate in political life, you know, who uh, also lived in, in this small world and didn't want even just to, still didn't believe that we uh, could do everything, they also went out against violence. But yes, <laughs> I forgot the question, but the Lukashenko is still in power yes. only because of violence. 
because people uh, don't have um, don't want to contradict with violence also and you know he, it's it's rather easy to beat people to put them in jail so but in a way the revolution is um only managed half of its aim, or nothing of its aim, because Lukashenko is still holding on to power. Uh, you left Belarus very soon. You were made to leave mm -hmm. Belarus very soon after the elections. You're based in Lithuania now with your team. You travel a lot. You meet uh, foreign dignitaries. What are you trying to achieve now? We are trying to put so much pressure on Lukashenko's regime to make him uh, or government to start negotiations with the opposition or majority that will conduct uh, to new elections. Because Lukashenko is not our president, he's not illegitimate, and the only way out of the situation is new elections, where he, if he wants, he can participate or not. It will be his decision. I don't know, you know, a lot of scenarios of of, uh, of this election, but we need new election. This is a revolution, not about uh, east or west. You know, it's it's about people's dignity. It's uh, about stolen voices. Is it enough for you that Lukashenko leaves? I mean, is it okay for you that anyone wins uh, the new elections, should there be elections? Or do you are you looking for pol real political change? For sure, we need real political change. And uh, I don't think that people uh, will choose anybody with uh, the values of the regime or with the values of dictatorship and even if so if it happens it will be people's choice because new elections have to be under observation of OSCE uh, it should be absolutely fair and transparent for people understood that this is their choice it's not because somebody wrote these numbers this is people's responsibility this is people's right to uh, elect whom they want. You said that um, you're trying to put so much pressure that he would be forced into negotiations and, and new, uh, new elections. I just read an academic paper um, that said that this is a leaderless revolution and that it lacks a clear ideology. It, how do you comment on, on, on this, on people saying that you don't have a clear strategy? We have aim new elections, and our strategy of victory is make this regime to start negotiations. That's what we need right now. So the future uh, steps, uh, they will have to be made uh, with, together with Belarusian people. Only people who will uh, uh, decide whether we, uh, I don't know, go to West, East, to the Ukraine or Australia, nobody knows. But this is, this will be people's choice, you know. Because that's why we can't uh, take somebody's side, you know. We uh, can't have a, a strict position on this, on this or that point because this is under people's decision. It's, this is how hard is it um, uh, seeing that uh, the opposition figures are either um, in jail or or abroad that you, you you cannot work inside Belarus the interesting fact is that Lukashenko thought that if political leaders are in jail or are in exile the revolution will disappear but this case is different because every person in Belarus now is a leader. Everyone is doing something to put pressure uh, on Lukashenko. Even if I disappear, if, even if I'm, uh, if I'll be jailed, I don't know, uh, revolution will not end. People themselves are leading this revolution. You know, you can't jail everybody. 
more and more people are involved in this uh, uh, in this protesting movement. But they are not on the streets anymore. They are not because uh, Lukashenko uh, made like a ghetto from uh, our cities. People are really afraid to go out because uh, for sure uh, a lot of them will be jailed. Uh, I don't know in the evening during the demonstrations. But it doesn't mean that people gave up. At this very moment, people are so inventive in the uh, protesting actions. They uh, are organizing in neighborhoods. They are organizing between professions like uh, groups of medics, students, teachers, workers appeared. They are that are communicating to each other. They are. Uh, make such constructions and now they are even stronger than uh, people were uh, in uh, august or in, or in autumn so people are continuing to fight they you know we we, we don't see uh, these people on the streets but uh, they are everywhere and we know this and people know this and that's the moment does it also mean that external pressure from foreign countries is very essential, becoming more essential over time? Uh, international support is extremely important for uh, our uh, revolution of dignity, because right after election, uh, it was such a huge inspiration for Belarusian people when the most of the countries of the world didn't um, recognize uh, election as legitimate and didn't recognize Lukashenko as legitimate president. And at that moment, people understood that we are on our right way. The whole world, who, the whole democratic world, are standing with us. They are supporting us and they, uh, are so, uh, you know, they show their solidarity with the Russian people. And the whole world with, uh, was inspired with the Russian people, with the Russian women, with the Russian uh, seniors, you know, who went out for these demonstrations. Uh, and we knew that we are not alone, uh, though uh, we got a great support. Yes, but we are in a EU country today, mm -hmm. and you have said, I think it was in the Financial Times uh, interview, that the voice of Europe has so far not been very strong, and that Europe cannot turn a blind eye to what is happening in Belarus. So even though you got a lot of support, you didn't get enough support. Am I reading you right? From our point of view, uh, European Union was such a powerful organization, if I may say so, that we were sure that it can act immediately, it can react immediately, and uh, it has enough power to influence the situation, to be so vocal about uh, human rights abuses and violations that it will uh, make Lukashenko to start these negotiations. But uh European Union turned out to be very slow like machine so many agreements so many discussions you know maybe <laughs> it was people misunderstanding of how uh, countries are working together but you know but the European Union was very different when when things were happening in in the Ukraine were you were you expecting the sim similar kind of attitude I think yeah, after the um, you know, participation of European Union in the Ukrainian case, we thought that uh, EU will be the same uh, strong about Belarus. Um, but maybe so as in uh, it wasn't pro-European uh, uh, revolution, you know, maybe it wasn't such a... Uh, such a you know, strong messaging maybe, but really I, I have to uh, have to <clears throat> underline that we are grateful for everything European Union made to us. But people people feel yes. a little bit disappointed, and now uh, we see that um, 
when there are no people in the streets, not because they don't want to go out and or protests uh, finished, not because they had to, uh, they had to leave their streets. We see that attention a little bit disappearing, but I'm here just to say that we are still there inside the country. People are still suffering. People are, for for example, my husband in nine is in jail for nine months already. So p innocent people are uh, getting sentenced to years of prison for nothing, for just going out to say that uh, the, the elections were falsified or we are against the violence. So the situation is the same. So please, time is, uh, ur so it's urgent to help us. How? What, what do you want the European Union to do? Uh, to put uh, outside pressure on Lukashenko, to isolate him financially, first of all, uh, because this regime, our, you know, our economy is uh, in such position so that we are asking money from everywhere all the time, from Russia, from West and all the countries just to keep just to, to keep our economy, they helped us. And if you cut uh, financial support, uh, if you will call for negotiations, different organizations like OSCE, just not to put uh, uh, Belarus in financial, in political and humanitarian crisis, uh, Lukashenko will have to agree one day. You know, he will not survive without money. He but will... he is getting money. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Uh, you already mentioned you are getting money from Russia. It's of course, impossible to have this discussion without mentioning Russia. He is getting money from Russia, and actually, he's being pushed more towards Russia. How do you see the situation? First of all, Kremlin is not Russian, you know, and Kremlin supported Lukashenko at the beginning, and uh, as we know, uh, he got two uh, tranches. Uh, to support uh, Lukashenko, but now we see that support of Kremlin is not so high now as it was before. Maybe, you know, Kremlin uh, also didn't believe in Belarusian people. They were sure that everything will finish very soon, that it's like in uh, 2010 or something. But Lukashenko is not cont controlling people anymore. He's not controlling their minds. He's not controlling their wishes. So now, we know that for sure they are going, uh, they are uh, looking for a uh, way out of the situation, maybe together. We don't know how it's actually going on, but um, uh, Lukashenko is becoming toxic, not only to European countries, but to Russia as well. And so is it actually up to Russia to say, you know, your time is up, put the thumb down and, and there will be a new president? Uh, it can be the way out. We called to Russia uh, many times uh, to set communication with us, for us to explain the situation. But nothing. Nothing, uh, but we are sure that uh, the, um, that Russia can uh, be a mediator in our case. How do you? How would the opposition see Russia's role in in the future, Belarus? <clears throat> We will have wonderful relationship with Russia, the same trade relationship, maybe even better, but these relationships will be transparent and understandable for both sides, no more political games, like we are neighbors, we will be always together, so we have to find a way to collaborate in the future, you know, and we can be, uh, we are looking friends, but not enemies. Yesterday, in the Finnish Broadcasting Company's interview, you said that maybe Finland could in some way mediate. Uh, can you please elaborate that idea that Finland could mediate between uh, the Belarusian opposition, uh, Lukashenko and Russia? I think, yes. Finland is, uh, uh, is the country that lives Mm. you know, that, that um, how to say it in English, that uh, manage to have wonderful relationship with 
West and uh, and Russia, you know, and you are well known for your uh, mediation, for your uh, for organizing negotiations, and uh, as a member of OCE, uh, you can also uh, contribute in this uh, mediation process, and you know how to talk to Russia, you know how to work with them, and Finland for sure can be. Um, no, it's not mediation, it's not a negotiation between Russia and uh, Belarus. It's negotiation between Belarusians and uh, regime, but with participation of Russia, Ukraine, or uh, our neighbors, and who is, uh, who is interested in a good outcome of this situation. You will be meeting with our president uh, this afternoon, and tomorrow you will be meeting with our Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs. What will you ask of them? What will be your message? I will ask, uh, first of all, for assistance in these questions, in the question of mediation and negotiations. I will ask uh, about um, isolation of the regime. I will ask about uh, assistance to civil society. At the moment, I will ask about justice in our country, just contributing to justice. And I will ask to be vocal, because uh, as I already said, uh, nothing has ended. Everything is continuing and people are not giving up, but people are suffering. And it's rather difficult for such democratic countries as Finland to understand what's really going on inside Belarus, where there is no law, where violence is blossoming, where people don't feel safe uh, not in the homes, no in the streets. They are afraid to say a word. You know, you just uh, we want people uh, to know about this. And the Belarusian diaspora in Finland is very active now. They are uh, organizing rallies in uh, uh, on the place to to tell uh, usual Finnish people about us. To tell, look, uh, it's 21st century. The questions having to be solved with the help of violence questions, uh, political crisis, humanitarian crisis have to be solved with uh, dialogue. Still a few words of the round table that you were talking about. Um, why would Russia want to then sit down in the same table if, they, if it has not wanted to have a dialogue with you up to now? Uh, because it's for Russia, it's becoming not comfortable to work with Lukashenko. They understand that Lukashenko is a political bankrupt, that he is uh, causing more problems. And uh, we are always, uh, you know, messaging this to Russia. They, we have to think about future uh, of uh, our relationship that we will be the same, uh, in same good relationship as, as now and even better. So I actually got a question from yeah. the audience uh, regarding your relationship with Russia. How would you characterize Belarusian people's feelings towards Russian state and people? And have they changed after last, last fall? <clears throat> uh, Belarusian attitude towards Russian people hasn't changed because we are really in good relationship. But towards Kremlin has changed radically because in our case, supporting Lukashenko means supporting violence and tortures in Belarus. Very good, very good answer. There's a new president in the United States. Mm -hmm. Have you already requested for a phone call or a meeting with President Biden? We are in uh, connect with Biden's administration and we uh, are hoping to visit um, Washington in the nearest future. I think the only uh, obstacle is uh, COVID restrictions. Have you got a green light from the administration that they would want to see you visit? Uh, we are uh, organizing this visit at the moment. How important would it be to get President Biden's support for your cause? How 
how important would it be to get to you know it is important of course because the usa is uh, one of the strongest voices in the world and uh, the usa and uh, joe biden personally has a strong position on belarus he declared this before his election and uh, the USA is uh, very powerful and I think that they can help Belarusians on national level and, uh, in, and together with, in collaboration with EU and Canada, just if countries are united, <laughs> so they, uh, their actions can be stronger and braver. You have said that if you if you achieve your goal that there would be new presidential elections in, in, in Belarus, you would not run yourself. Why not? I have never had such ambitions. I, people asking me now to do this. And uh, as a matter of fact, I don't really know uh, what will be the obstacles of these new uh, elections. And never say never, but uh, I don't have the intention to participate. I have promised to people that uh, my mandate is only for uh, till new elections. I will be uh, doing my best until we um, organize these elections. But then I got very huge experience in politics accidentally i have good connections uh, all over the world now and for sure i will be useful for my country i will be staying with my people uh, with belarusians uh, after the new elections just to build a new country and i can be it's not necessary to be the president to be uh, with people to be useful so <laughs> but you have got a taste now of how it feels to be changing your country and actually we got a question from the audience also about gender equality uh, it is something that your country has been lacking so could you just see that for example your husband or other male uh, opposition leaders would become uh, at least run for president and there would be maybe no women in the race? I'm sure there will be women because uh, this year uh, our women understood that they are strong, that they can be sometimes uh, be even stronger than men. They that they made this first line in front of right police just hiding men behind. So we had i think that we had this gender revolution as well this last year because it was such a chance for belarusian women to um uh, to say that look we are here we the same as you and for sure uh the the fact that people supported three women on the street and and me as as the president elected that they they show that uh, we are ready for women, accidentally we are ready, and maybe we even want women to be a leader of our country, because women are kinder, women like a mother who is loving her nation as children. So we were lack of this um, kindness for so many years that we are striving for, uh, for these feelings. And uh, I'm sure that there will be women, and uh, but I, you didn't say 100% you will not run it. You might run. I'm not going to. But again, the the situation can be really uh, I don't know, you know, different. Uh, and we don't know what will happen. And that's actually my last question. How do you see, let's say, Belarus in one year's time? Mm. I think it will be still a difficult period for Belarus because we will have to recover from the economical situation we have now. And uh, <clears throat> we will um, rebuild economy and people will have to study to live uh, within democracy because it's also not, not very... Um, it's also uh you know just can't come like this 
okay, we are a democratic country, it's a way of thinking. When everybody understands that he's important, that his decision is important in, in, in ruling the country, so people will reorient, reorient the, um, their thoughts to, in democratic ways. But knowing uh, what price we paid for these changes and nobody knows uh, how much we are going to pay else now you know nobody is going what, what will happen people understood that to build new country we have to be united as we were united in this fighting and people are ready now for uh, they they know that it will be difficult but they are ready to manage any difficulties uh, because they want their children to live in safe uh, country where nobody is, is afraid to say a word or, or to go out to the street or something Svetlana Tsyanovskaya I wish you your family and your country all the best in the future thank you for support thank, thank you. you and thank you dear audience